He acquires most who requires nothing but commands respect. Erasmus, the education of a Christian prince. Hello again. Let's continue our Servantine journey through history's greatest novel. Sancho's formal departure is marked by three topics. First, attention to his dress, which accords with his new social status, dressed like a scholar and over that a broad tawny camel's hair overcoat. Second, attention to Sancho's similarly over-adorned ass. The gray was fitted out with a silk harness and new trappings. The squire monitors and values his ass more than the emperor of Germany, a sarcastic swipe at the Spanish Habsburgs. Now and again, Sancho looked back at his ass in whose company he felt so pleased that he would not have changed places with the emperor of Germany. Third, attention to the emotional exchange between knight and squire. He received the blessing of his master who gave it to him with tears in his eyes while Sancho received it with sobs in his voice. This is a meaningful moment in part two of Don Quixote, and Cervantes now divides his narrative between the stories of his two protagonists. The chapter concludes with one of the Duchess's maidens comically serenading Don Quixote from a garden below his window. There's a long preamble to the scene. Don Quixote is saddened by his squire's absence. Hardly had Sancho departed when Don Quixote felt alone, and the Duchess, sensing this, offering him the services of four of my duenas as beautiful as flowers. The implication is erotic, and the humor of the episode derives from Don Quixote's efforts to remain demure, as if he were a virginal damsel and the women of the palace were his aggressive suitors. To me, they will not be like flowers, but thorns piercing my soul. Did you know the serenade originated in the form of ballads sung at dusk below the windows of lovers? Don Quixote refuses the Duchess' offer out of loyalty to Dulcinea, and she respects his wishes, expressing hope that Sancho will perform his lashes of disenchantment. May the heavens kindly infuse the heart of Sancho Panza, our governor, with a desire to conclude quickly with his lashings so that the world might again enjoy the beauty of such a noble woman. Three more topics surface before Don Quixote is serenaded. First, there are curious scatological references. The Duchess provides her guest with chamber pots, the necessary vessels, so that he can retire in private. And when Don Quixote undresses for bed, the narrator oddly emphasizes that he does not fart, specifically that he does not unleash whispers, nor other things that might discredit the purity of his principles. Quixotic Mission. With what does the knight compare the four ladies-in-waiting offered to him by the duchess? A. Coins. B. Thorns. C. Flowers. Correct answer. B. Thorns. What does all of this indecency mean? At the very least, it is hilarious preparation for the failed love story about to unfold. It might also have political implications. Second, recalling the major trope of Don Quixote part one, the Duchess observes that Don Quixote must be tired from his recent thrashing or milling. He responds that his ride atop Clavileño was actually quite smooth and he wonders why Malambruno wanted to destroy such a fine horse. I cannot fathom what could have moved Malambruno to destroy so speedy and gentle a mount and burn him just like that. This recalls the importance of Sancho's ass, but the Duchess also echoes the Trojan horse theme, observing that Clavileño's ashes and Malambruno's letter have eternalized the courage of the great Don Quixote of La Mancha. Third, Cervantes exposes Don Quixote's extreme mortification due to a run in his stockings, which he has no way of mending. This passage has generic and thematic implications. It links the knight's fall from Clavileño in the epic chivalric mode to the Hidalgo's focus on his material poverty in the picaresque bourgeois mode. Note also that money and green textiles, two major themes in part two, are at the heart of this scene. He got a run of about two dozen stitches in one of his stockings, which was left like lattice work. This affected the good gentleman greatly, 
and he would have given an ounce of silver to have a bit of green silk. I say green silk because his stockings were green. That's all for now. Join me next time as we continue interpreting the most important literary masterpiece in the Spanish language. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.